Next week is the Detroit Auto Show, and we already know what the main event will be. That's the 2014 Chevrolet Corvette. So what do we know about the new C7 Corvette so far? And the big question is, does the Corvette still matter? Also, in a new segment, we're talking about this week's big stories in the car world. JF, executive producer of Drive. JF Muse Hills with me. <laughs> That's all today at Road Testament. Damn it, watch it. So for 2013 here on Road Testament, we've got a new segment. It's the news. And you'll know the news because we're sitting at this table. It happens at the top of every show. Because right here. Wood adds credibility. Yes, it does, it's JF. Everything. So Audi this week became the first automaker to be granted a license to operate autonomous cars in the state of Nevada. Google, of course, was the first company in general to get such a license. And Google's, of course, known for its self-driving Prius. Audi is known for the TT that it ran at Pikes Peak. Well, it ran up Pikes Peak, up not Pikes Peak. at Pikes Peak. Well, not at the, not the event. Not at the yeah, event, yeah, yeah. but it did navigate Pikes Pretty Peak. Cool. Um, and also did DARPA, right? Didn't I think DARPA so. Challenge? I don't know if it was the same car, but yes. Um, I'm curious to know whether or not they're going to be running TTs or some other vehicle. Yeah, they haven't said. Okay. Well, and, yeah. you know, I'm surprised it's Audi and not Volkswagen in general. Because Volkswagen has this, you know, giant electronics lab in And they've been uh, working with California. DARPA for much longer than Audi has been. In they have, because yeah. they had the Touareg. Tua Touareg, yeah. And they also had the, they had a few government grants to work on some stuff. Yeah, as well. they did. Can we go back to the license plate? I have to say, if, if I were in Nevada, um, and I know Nevada is a, quite a big state. Yeah. But I would want something more than a license plate that's red to tell me that there's no one driving that car. <laughs> well, it's not actually, you know, um, I want a skull and crossbones on everyone's car because everybody drives like crap. Well, so, yes, and true. I don't mean just Nevada. I mean right. in general. Well, yeah, but a red license plate, eh, I want like, I want the biohazard, like crash <laughs> test vinyl across the car. And also, is this Australia? <clears throat> or what's... Really bad joke. Sorry, but wait going. a minute. Or, or I got another bad joke okay. for you. What's the... Um, what's the uh, uh, Table of the elements. What is AU? It's gold, right? You're, you want to know something? That's right. And you know what else? Mobius strip. Okay. Don't mess with me. Don't mess with me about uh, science. Dropping science, JF. Next story. So um, the other long-haired automotive journalist, um, James May. Yeah. Also much more epic than I am in, uh, in almost every way. Well, it's just the way he's posing, and it's black and white. If we made you black and white? If I was, we just walked around black and white. <laughs> um, so, so James May is not happy about the Internet. The internet or social media? Well, the internet and social media. What okay. happened? So what he's saying is that uh, the internet's giving away the secrets of Top Gear. So they go somewhere. They want to make it uh, a, a kind of a, a surprise when they show up somewhere, mm -hmm. and they do a show like when they do their epic shows yeah. in, in you know Bolivia. Like, like all good storytelling, you want to have the punch kind of left behind. If there's a photo taken of a car that's beat up, then you know. Right. So everyone's fine. Everyone recognizes them, uses their smartphones, and they end mm -hmm. up on the internet somewhere, yeah. like Facebook. Yeah. Um, so he's saying that kind of sucks for Top Gear. Yeah, I totally believe it. Yeah, but um, we don't. I kind of don't think it sucks for Top Gear. Well, they could take advantage of it, but um, yeah, and in a way, it kind of builds their their stardom. Um, look at what when they came to New York. You guys at Jalopnik did this whole big piece yeah. about tracking and stalking them. Right. I know we did. Well, I mean, the, the thing about it is that it does sort of amplify. Um, amplify their notoriety. Yeah. Not that they need any more amplification. But the, the thing that... Um, well, it's, it's like this because they have to drive the same roads that any of their fans would have to drive. Right. So it's an element of like they, they feel they're one with the people as opposed to a celebrity who's in an escort or whatever it may be. Like, right. But at the same time, I understand that you spend a lot of time and a lot of money producing exactly. a show yeah. that's epic. Like they do epic shows. Yeah. And you kind of want to keep that a secret until it runs. Exactly. And but he had something else to say about the future of a Top Gear episode based off this, this yes. kind of social media. That was kind of interesting because he said that um, in the future, I mean, he was kind of joking, but in the future that a Top Gear episode could be made by a crowd, crowdsourced. Literally, they, they tweet that they're going to be somewhere and everyone bring, brings their cameras and they produce the show. This is kind of the same concept of like Trent Reznor with his, his music album. Well, that's true. And, and I, think, I think this is, uh, with his music videos, I think that this is genius. In fact, I hate him because we've been planning something like this <sighs> I know. for quite and, some time. And, no, but you know, and that's the thing. He doesn't mm. like that idea. I think that's a fantastic idea. I mean, of course, yeah. you still do the regular TV show. Yeah. And then... But for the internet, you, you do connect, a kind of behind the you scenes. You connect thing. with your audience, and you have the awesome. audience part of it. Ford did this with the Fiesta, with the Focus down in Jamaica or something a little bit ago. Yeah, pretty cool. On. 
Is that the news? Anyway, that's the news. We're going back over to the couch to talk about the Corvette C7, which we're going to see at uh, the uh, Detroit Auto Show next week. So uh, hang in there. See, um, you look great in black and white. Thank that you. That footage we just saw, it's awesome. Every little bit helps. Yeah. Yeah. Um, also, yes, Road Testament, at Drive on Twitter, and uh, Facebook.com slash Drive TV. JF, uh, we are talking about the uh, C7 Corvette today, and you have some stuff from Twitter. I do. So before the show, you took the liberty of tweeting about I the did Corvette take that liberty. C7. Yep. Um, and, and I have some comments from people before we get started. The Jeep Liberty. <laughs> No, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, Lewis Crank or Crack says. <laughs> Lewis Crack. <laughs> we have, wait, 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 wait. We have a guy named Lewis uh, Crack. It's, it's uh, Crack. Crack. Uh, I, I can't uh, see. Whatever. Anyway, he says, "I'll be excited if it's a pure driver's car. Meh. If it's filled with technology to replace the driver. Right? Okay. Uh, Emil B or Emil B says, "I'm more interested in the technology developments they made. I'm sure the design will be good." Okay. Uh, Torito says, "Meh." Meh. Yeah. And uh, this is the best one yet. Um, yeah. Matt Broomy says it's a Corvette. It will be epic because it's a Corvette. Okay. So that's one side of the argument. The other yeah. side is that, um, well, which you didn't read the one where the guy said um, what? he hates it already because it's American. <laughs> so that's. <laughs> <laughs> so the thing about the, the Corvette is over the years, it's obviously evolved, but yep. um, a lot of people still see it as an inferior sports car. And I want to take, for example, so Edmunds, and we're referencing a competitor, just did something on the Viper. Now, yeah. from the outside, the Viper looks completely different. And you drove the Viper, and you said it was an amazing car compared to the other car. Yeah. And then Edmunds went inside and actually did a whole analysis on the suspension. It's not much different from no. the previous Viper. No. So no. it really says that the package of the whole car is really, you know, the chassis, like the small things you don't really see mm -hmm. can make a car completely different. So when you look at the C7, which is, of course, known to be just an iteration of the C6, you know, from the outside, a lot of people like us in the past will say, ah, whatever, just a small little upgrade. But you want to know something? We don't know. And I suspect it's going to be actually quite good. Well, let's take a look at the C7. Okay. Oh, snap. That's the 63 Stingray. <laughs> you were working on that one all afternoon. I was. Yeah. No, okay. I mean, I, and, and really, <clears throat> I, I put this in there just to remind people of where the Corvette's been. And really, yeah. honestly, this was a high watermark in American automotive design. Mm -hmm. anyway. Seriously, one of the most beautiful American cars ever made. Absolutely. I mean, this is, I mean, in, in terms of being a really original design, mm -hmm. Larry Shinoda, they basically took Larry off the street. He was a hot <laughs> rodder and gave him a pencil. I mean, all right. I'm, I'm There's generalizing. more to it than that, but yeah. But but he came up with this awesome design. Um, I always love the doors of these, but they it goes into the roof sill. Yeah, right. Yeah. Exactly. Very I cool. mean, you know, he, obviously he took some uh, some influence from from the Italians and mm -hmm. also from jet aircraft and mm -hmm. stuff like that. But really, a groundbreaking design. Um, and then they went into this just to go quickly through the um, the last 50 years of Corvette. The uh, C3. I know that's a 72, by the way. It's a 72, <laughs> as you can tell by there. And it's the 454. And still a very good looking car. Uh, not, yeah, yeah, no, I think that it, but see, the thing about the C3 is that it went from this to mm. the disco mm -hmm. C3, right? Mm -hmm. So it was great. And then it, I, I mean, it, it, literally the C3 saw the biggest, it was really the biggest, most abused um, Corvette. Not the largest, but the most abused Corvette. Yep. Because uh, by 1975, I think it was 158 horsepower. <laughs> just the smog regulations, they just killed it. It was yep. the worst, literally the trough of, of, uh, of Corvettes. But it nice. ended with the Crossfire injected yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, 80, 82 um, Disco Mobile. And then the next one, so 84 came the C4. We started to see a little bit better, yeah. more updated design. Um, C5, which I think is one of my favorite cars, but the least favorite design yeah, wise. Yeah, it was a, yeah. Kind of an ungainly design. Well, um, it's, it's early 90s and typical in GM style, everything from the Well, early. these, I mean, the straky weird crap that they yeah. did and, and just, I just, the, the proportions seem weird to me. Yep. Um, and then to the uh, C6. Which was a f great which, which step forward. Probably the best. Amazing. Th yeah, well, yeah. other than, 
I think the best design improvement in the whole car's history. Yeah. Um, the C6, I think, is still pretty decent. And, and you know, the only flaw, which is an obvious flaw that everyone has stated, was the interior. And if you're saying that the worst thing of that car was the interior, that says a lot about the car. Yeah. So what yeah. we're going to do... It wasn't bad. It just wasn't, comp it wasn't up against the competition. Yeah. It so, fell flat there. So when we look at the C7, the next generation, let's look at exterior, interior, and engine. Exactly. So we'll start with the exterior. So, so let's just let's be straight with this. This is a rendering. Right. This is so not these the actual are car. We don't know what the actual car is going to look like We won't know next for week. a few days since th we're filming this ahead of the Detroit Auto Show before it's revealed. Right. But we're expecting to see it something like this, especially, especially the back end. We've had leaked images look like that. Yeah. Right? So there's a lot of weird leak stuff. You know, Jalopnik <clears throat> got some renderings done yeah. um, from some information that they got. Yeah. And then Car and Driver did some extra ones. By the way, so th there's eventually, so we're going to show you some of the other, renderings. Um, other not renderings, but the other um, graphics that have come out here and there. Some of them have been from manuals, yeah. and from dealer training stuff mm -hmm. that have leaked out. So we're, so they've, um, Ian, go back one second. The, um, what's happened is, you see, there are a lot of lines on this that um, we know are actually going to be there. Mm -hmm. So you'll see coming up, this front mm -hmm. is pretty much how it's going to look. It's legit, yeah. So, sorry, Ian. I think the biggest confusion is back here. Yes, With the right. window. That's I, where we don't know if that's going to be a legitimate window, if that's going to be a plastic window. We don't, we don't know much about that. The rear end from that first uh, other photo is pretty much spot on. Yeah. Um, that one, that is pretty much spot on. Not sure about this, but this is a big area of confusion. So well, we, can, we can go forward Yeah, now well, before you do that, you know, just to... You know, you saw those um, those tail lights. Yep. It's the first Corvette without the um, without the. Well, let's see. All right, not the first. The C6 had square square tail lights. Yes. In that. But then they went back to the round. Yeah. And yeah. now they're going on to something. It's that gonna looks be the, like the, the full the, model range will have that back. Yeah. End, is what you're saying. Yes. Moving on. <laughs> that is actually the best looking photo I've ever seen in terms of a, of a, even if even if it's not anything like this, I'd love that photo. All right. So that rendering. Sorry. So um, G the GM GMC CEO uh, Dan Ackerson yeah. said that it's going to be the most beautiful car in the world. Okay, that's when you start pissing people off. <laughs> why? Right there. Because why? As, why not have? Why because not be bold about it. Be bold about it? No, because already we already we know that there are plenty of cars out there that will be, and still are, and will continue to be the most beautiful cars in the world. Well, the Corvette. I'm not saying it won't look good. But if you come up and stand in front of an audience, especially an international audience uh, at, like Detroit, and say, yeah. this is the most beautiful car in the world, you're going to get laughed off stage. Well, yeah, but if you're the CEO of a company and you're not saying that that's the most beautiful car in the world, you should, you should be, be fired immediately. Well, no, because you should be authentic. You should be, you should be saying something along the lines of, you're this car will stack, uh, uh, will stack itself against some of the best cars, best looking cars in the world. That's a better way of phrasing. That's 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 better PR. To claim uh, it's the best looking car. I think the CEO needs modesty. Is not something that looks good in a CEO. Sometimes, I don't know. I mean, authenticity I, is. Uh, all right, all right. Well, we will agree to disagree on that point. Okay. Let's go um, to this. Is the the Jalopnik? rendering that Jalopnik did. So this was a Z, This is the ZR1. Well, so this was, I don't know, yeah, I yeah, mean, whatever. The, the ZR1 potential rendering, because right. they, des they designed these cars at the same time. Right. So apparently, Jalopnik says they got these, um, uh, and by the way, just to be clear, I write for Jalopnik. This, I had nothing to do with this story. So. <clears throat> and you found the Jalopnik. Well, yes, many, many years ago. <laughs> so inherently, and then you're I left, the cause for the downfall of the automotive industry. <laughs> the downfall industry. of the automotive industry. And then well, I left and then came back, and yes. now I'm, I kind of... But you were not involved in this story I was not anyway. involved this, in this, this story was, at this all. This Ray Wirt, I believe, right? Yeah, yes. I, 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 I didn't do any of the research for this. So um, this is... what. So I've heard really, really close to what the, uh, the design is going to look like. Cool. Now, obviously... This, these proportions look weird because the drawing is not, you know, the, the, the drawing is not going to look as accurate as the, the, uh, actual, as the car. actual car. All right, so let's keep going. Um, Back end, this is a patent? Yeah, this sketch? is a patent sketch, right. So, so unless GM is pulling a fast one on everyone, this is what the, the rear end of the car is going to look like. Yeah, so this is the interesting thing. I mean, there, you can... The new taillights, um, you could see a little bit of Camaro in there. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing, too. But there's a new sport DNA yeah. at, uh, J at Chevrolet that this is kind yeah. of playing And, and, and you want to know something? It's, it's radically different from what they've traditionally done. Also, four taillights. Uh, four four, four, four uh, exhaust, exhaust ports yeah. across. Um, 
you know, and being that this came from the patent office, if they want to trademark the design, yeah. this is pretty much what we what it will look like. Um, I'm impressed. I'm certainly impressed. Well, the other, you know, something that's interesting is that that in the run up to the car's uh, internet, you know, leakage or whatever mm -hmm. you want to call it, there was a lot of talk that they would go back to the split window, like the '63 yeah. that we showed. Yeah. Um, they could probably still do that if you look at the way that the um, the designed. rear hatch is designed. Yeah. But I'm not sure if it would work. Maybe, maybe it'll it may be a special edition. Maybe yeah. it'll be the new Z06. You'll see a split window. I'm, not, I'm just I, The one thing I want to say about this back end, it just yeah. feels plasticky. <laughs> it's, it doesn't feel like, well. Well, when you look at it, this whole rear diffuser kind of design, all pla it, obviously it's all plastic. Right. It's going to look plastic because this is obviously going to be Well, we don't know because, well, the one thing that we do know about the body is there's, we don't know how much carbon fiber they're going to be using. True. We don't know anything because we're just making this all up because just the car hasn't been revealed. <laughs> <laughs> but let's go on. Next. All right. <clears throat> all right. So. Yes. Interior. Yes. So the interior of the Corvette C7. Mm -hmm. The As we know, as everybody who knows Corvette knows, that the interior has taken a lot of crap for being not up to par mm -hmm. with the rest of the car. If the C6 had a great interior, it would have been an amazing car. Yes. And I actually don't think the interior is too bad. It just it's wasn't just up not an outstanding interior. Exactly. It's, you know, it's not like what Volkswagen would do, because Volkswagen and Audi and the Volkswagen Group have amazing interiors on all their they cars. They concentrate Even on the driving point. experience from the, f the f touches, the feels, and everything. It feels like GM just didn't get it. It feels like GM, you know, kind of, that's where they're saving a little bit of money. Yeah. But now with um, Chrysler uh, really, really upping the Viper's interior, making it really look good. If GM doesn't do something with this interior, they're idiots. Yes, and so, so the talk is that they are. So let's take a look at yeah. what we think the, uh, the new interior is going to look like. Oh. It's, uh, it's very, very high tech, don't you think? This is the joke you worked on for now. Yeah, I this is the second joke I worked on for now. <laughs> um, yeah, this is actually the, uh, the C4 yep. Corvette. And do you remember how, I don't know if you don't remember because you were like nothing years old, but yeah. this was l like looking at, uh, at a spaceship. And don't forget, this is before... Um, this is before uh, Back to the Future came out. Oh, it's a good point. Right. Okay. So, so like all of these new new uh, dashes that came out yeah, in the eighties yeah. with all these well, LEDs. That's pretty impressive for the it's for the eighties. Yeah. Okay. okay. So then they went back to the, okay, the gauges and stuff. So let's go. So this is that's the hint of what the C7 right. gauge cluster will look like. Right? Yes, exactly. So and this is actually. And we'll talk. I think we're talking about this later. Yeah. The, they reveal this with the with PlayStation. When you when you drive the car, you see this. Right. In we're going to talk about yeah. that. We're going to talk about uh, that. The whole video game marketing yeah. portion of this later, because that was kind of the one genius. thing I noticed though with this design. This is the gauge cluster for the C7, but they're showing a C6 here. Right. In the <laughs> yeah, because they don't want <laughs> they don't well, want to give it clever. away. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. They didn't so want they, to give it away. They didn't want to give it away. Yeah. But you know. Again, this is what, uh, what uh, Chrysler did with the Viper. They really added all this new stuff. And Ford has this, too, with their track pages or whatever, um, or the track apps yeah. in Ford, and then the pages at SRT, yeah. where just like the GTR did, you've got all these apps for performance that you can use. Yep. And so the Corvette had none of that stuff, or very little of it until now. And so now um, they're adding all the visual stuff that, it. Um, that the, re the other cars have, um, have, have already had. If, if this is a, a hint at what the future of the interior has to say, I'm, I'm impressed. Well, well go which, the, the gauge cluster. Ian, yeah, yeah. go to the next. Um, so this is, the, this is the sort of cockpit This is from the a a service, uh, dealer service guide or something? Yeah, yeah something leaks. like that. Uh, and you can see paddle um, for the, <laughs> interesting, they, they provide the paddles. But this has a yeah, well, right, yeah. So the it's like yeah, so it's, it's like yeah. got all the features. It's yep. got the paddles and the shifter. But and if you'll notice, there are a lot of notches. That's more in there. than a six-speed. That's more like than a six-speed. So yep. a seven-speed? Maybe we, who knows? Perhaps. Anyway, I have to say that's that is uh, a vast improvement. But again, it comes down to the, the quality of the materials they use <laughs> inside of the cockpit, as well as the seats. The seats have, yeah. are the key. Okay, so two things on that. Okay. Hit me up. Do so, it. A, Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the people who have seen the, uh, the test mules running around have seen the, words, the word Recaro uh. in the seat. So we don't know. Car and driver is saying that Recaro uh, might be the seat supplier. Good. Okay, we'll see. cool. Good. Uh, also, the, um, the second thing we're talking about is materials. 
Um, if you go, Ian, if you move up, actually, a little later on, actually, I don't think it's next, but Let's we're going we're gonna to see the materials. Oh, so this is the, this is the tack, obviously. Cool. It's, uh, what is it, 60, what does it go up to? Uh, 6,400. No, fuel, fuel cutoff is at 6,600. 6,600, okay. So, um, okay. so in there a little somewhere. Bit, okay, yeah. thanks. Um, this is a blurry shot of the, that someone took of the dash cluster. Okay. You know, they're still, um, they're still using some, some. If I were sitting in a prototype, analogs. I would focus a little bit better on taking the interior photo. I know, and maybe somebody had to grab it, but uh, before the <coughs> security showed up. Um, anyway, so talking about interior materials. Oh, cool. In some a teaser that they ran, I haven't seen there's this. carbon fiber and there's this um, stitching. leather stitching that looks a little bit better. That looks good. I like that design. All right. Yeah. Next. Yeah, so okay, this is also typical. the stitching right. on the... All right, enough, enough. All so right. we, there's not a lot that we know about the interior, but if... Yeah. if you By know, the time half our audience watches, the car's already out. So exactly, yeah. So, all right, anyway. let's keep going. Let's keep going through this. <laughs> so um, also the other thing we know from this button is that it'll be a convertible eventually. Yeah. And like we wouldn't Didn't have been able to figure that, yeah. figure that out yet. What okay. else? Um, switch gear. So cool. the switch gear is... Um, Heated cooling seats. All right, this is all typical stuff. Typical stuff, but I mean, the design is obviously a little, little, bit, little bit different. Corvette, I don't know how much uh, I like uh, it, a Camaro ish interior. Yeah. Okay, next. All right, next. Uh, let's just move through this. You uh, know, nah, steering wheel nah, 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 nah. stuff. Okay, so this. That leads us to right. the design. So, so this was a part of the, um, what, what, at least the, the, the people who leaked this said that it's from the, uh, the owner's guide. Mm -hmm. This is the brake cooling system a cool. little bit. This, however, is con confirmation of what the front, front end, end looks like. Look like yeah. And the front end, a lot of people are saying, looks like a uh, Ferrari F12. Mm -hmm. So it does have a, the, GT, mm -hmm. the GT look. Next. That's it. Well, that's it for the interior. Interior, okay. What else are we looking at? Engine. The new engine, uh, they're bringing back the LT1 designation. There's the oh. new engine right there. The, um, You're, this is how you waste three hours in the office. <laughs> okay, now I understand. Coming up with jokes. This okay. is the 1970 uh, LT1. <laughs> cool. And, um, Thank you. Okay, this is it. No, <laughs> that's not it. That's the 1990s LT1. Mm -hmm. um, no, that's it. Now, this was, we've, we've seen this for quite some time, though. Yeah. yeah so this we've heard about this. And in fact, they are, they're already selling the crate motors or putting orders for the crate motors. The orders are in, yeah. Yeah. So basically, it's the Gen 5 version of the 6.2 liter small block V8. Mm -hmm. This one has a direct injection and um, variable valve timing. Cool. Finally, you know, like. Yeah, I know. It took long <laughs> enough. It took long uh, enough. Did, um, did they give uh, power output yet? I thought someone. Power output's 450, 450. Okay. 450 horsepower, 450 pounds feet of torque. Cool. Uh, peak. Now, the, 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 big, the big question I have is with regards to how the Corvette owners of, this, of the internet are going to respond to everything we've set up to this point. Well, this is something that, yeah, of course, even, I, even me, the European car lover, loves this. I love everything I've seen. It's just a question of, OK, this does not look like a Corvette that um, the, the generation lovers will, will right. adhere to. This is a new age Corvette. Right. This so is totally Gen Y, whatever you well, want to call it. Well, here's the thing about that. I think the thing that is not going to make any, uh, win any fans among tech lovers and um, European car lovers who are really into the technology that, say, BMW brings to the table yeah. with double overhead cam all the time and like double Vanos and, and Valvetronic and all that crazy stuff. Yeah. Um, this engine actually compared to something like that where, you know, where in a BMW you step on the, you step on the accelerator and you're throttling up based on yeah. valve lift, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, so exactly. This looks like an engine from 10 kit. years ago, right? Yeah. But it's also a really efficient way to do power, yeah. right? The, the, um, and and um, it's a packaging decision. And this is still how you get the car to be cheap. This is how you get a $50,000 car to be a $50,000 exactly. car. Yeah. With the performance on, on hand. Yeah. What else do we have? Um, so that's so this is the, what it's going to look, look like on bed. top. Okay. I just want to say one thing about the pushrod V8, right? Yeah. So you've been a lot of people, to get this out all No, day. and I know, and, and a this lot of people. This is the pivotal moment, people. A this lot is of where people talk sh <laughs> about the um, the uh, the pushrod V8. Uh -huh. Yes, it's um, it's seen as a uh, antiquated technology. Uh -huh. It's not. It's actually a pretty good packaging decision. It, but, yeah. The engines can be can be lower. The the front end can be lower. Um, you add a dry sump. 
oiling mm -hmm. system, and you can actually get the profile down really, mm -hmm. really, really short. Reduces the center of gravity of the car. Reduces the center of gravity Total, of the car. Uh, and with, with a car like this, you want the whole package to just be spot on. Right, exactly. Every little bit counts. So, you know, in some ways, a double overhead cam here would be unnecessary complexity. Yeah. The other thing is that it's an engine that GM shares across its line. Yeah. So um, you really want to make it easy to produce. Yep. Um, again, this is something we talked on a, on a show once about how it's accountants making more decisions than mm -hmm. the, the engineers. Mm -hmm. But um, I think this car is going to be good. Mm -hmm. And I think that Europeans need to come and drive it because I'm not a giant Corvette fan, mm -hmm. but I do As know. Am I. But I do know that it's a good car, and yeah. I know that the the uh, that's why we got to get Chris Harris over to drive it. Maybe because it's as a Brit, I think that if Chris likes the Corvette, yeah, I think the it, world will like the it. world will like it because Chris, everyone loves Chris. Everyone loves Chris. So the following graph is actually one that dictates the damn data. Yeah, damn, oh no, what are we looking at? That's crazy. So it's this, like this is the past 90 EKG. <laughs> no. This past 90 days of Google search results comparing in blue the Ferrari 458 versus in red. Hey, wait a minute. I know, this is a little mixed up, but trust so me. So we couldn't, because this is from Google, this we couldn't Google, change, yeah. we couldn't make the Ferrari red. Exactly, so blue is the Ferrari 458 in terms of um, the term Ferrari 458, and red is Corvette C7 in the past 90 days. And as you can see, obviously Ferrari being such an uh, important uh, term for kids of all ages, right. um, of course, has always gotten a, a large search result, but the Corvette C7 in the past 90 days is getting much closer and closer to outranking Ferrari. Now, this is pretty interesting. I mean, so, so you could say that the 458 it's kind of the baseline. It's for kind like, of the baseline for because exactly. you know Ferrari. A lot of people search for Ferrari in general. For, Ferrari four four five eight. I mean, when I worked at Zero to Sixty magazine, we put a Ferrari four four five eight on the cover. It was the you bestseller get, of, get, of all. You get right. big so traffic. Yeah. People love Ferrari, and that's just the way it and, goes. And, and we're in the game of entertainment and 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 views and rankings, so we know these stats. So right. Ferrari four five eight is always baseline. Yeah. So. So looking at at the Corvette. Now is this Corvette C seven or is just Corvette? Corvette C seven? Okay, got yes. it. Yes. So um, they got very close uh, uh, early November. So at what one happened? Point. What happened back Not then? Not really sure at that moment. Okay. Um, but the big one is here. Uh, actually, no. Sorry. Yeah, the big one is there right before December. So that's that's November twenty seventh. That day was when the Corvette C seven was available on PlayStation to drive in oh. camouflage. Yeah. And from there upwards. So that's where keeps growing and growing. So. So this is kind of like, not you know, to use a, a an overused word. This is sort of like the hype meter. Yep, that's exactly what that is. And I, I wanted to show this because it really represents how cool, um, how, how things like a marketing ploy, like putting the car in like video game, before it's revealed in camouflage, is really getting it much closer to yeah. to the Ferrari status. And the um, other thing, you know, and actually as um, also as magazines cover it as the internet more more of those things we've just shown yeah you know came on in the internet people started talking about it exactly there's more stories about how next week it's going to be shown we for the pay first very time. close attention to these yeah. these graphs and in fact that leads us to our new segment yes but how can so how can somebody get this google.com slash trends Google.com slash trends, and you could put in any car. Any compare, you can, it doesn't have to be a car. It can be uh, a well, fork versus knife. Do we care about forks and knives? We only no, care about we cars. we care about cars. And that actually leads us to a new section on road testament, which is. So this is a new segment on road testament. It's called Drive Trend Index. Kind drive of, Trend Index. Drive Trend, you know. Do you, you drive think, Trend. You think of trends in the motor industry. You trend. Think, trend, yeah. It's a trend. Anyway. Um, so it's actually taking advantage of, of the whole idea of uh, Google Analytics and understanding what people are actually searching on the internet. And when we think of benchmarking cars against each other, you want to gauge how people, or what, pe what vehicles people are interested in. And what better way to do it than the search terms they use in Google. So we've taken... Um, There's a lot of people on the Googles. A lot of people on a the Googles. A lot of people yeah. there. So we've taken uh, the liberty of, of kind of creating a few categories, four to be exact of everything from affordable cars to uber hyper exotic cars. Um, and by using these terms, we can actually dictate how popular a car is. So for example, dictate. Uh, dictate. You like that word. I, I don't know. know what that means, what you think it means. 
<laughs> you mean you mean, you mean uh, ascertain? Maybe? Ascertain. Sorry, you're right. I'm okay. just. I'm just. You want to know something, Mike? It's okay. It's fine. This is why you're worse. Uh, it's fine. It's fine. It's easily producer. But no, anyway, that's fine. Um, in the first category, affordable cars. This is one that actually gets a lot of traction. Right. We're comparing these these four cars, uh, five cars against each other. So every fr everything from an E30 down to the BRZ 370Z. That's funny. Not here's the thing. And I'm, I love that the, the E30 is there and no other 3 Series yeah. is there. Yeah. It's just like, you know, it's like, well, uh, what other 3 Series is there the but the E30? The E30, and I'm just going to give you this stat based off of some, some research I've done. The E30 is the most searched car in South Africa. Is it yes. in South Africa, really? <laughs> yes. So <laughs> when you compare the E30 versus the MX-5, the 370Z, the BRZ, and the GT86 of the FRS, you find that the E30 is the most searched term amongst the five of those. Now, have you tried E46 or yes, E36? Yes, it's much less. And it's much less. Yeah, so That's we have amazing. dictated, we have taken it upon ourselves to choose these cars within these categories. Mm -hmm. Over the coming weeks, we're going to do this every few weeks, we're going to, based off your comments, we'll change up these categories. But for the first time, we want to actually see, um, I think, things we th th thought worked well together. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So E30, 85 percentile, right? Top All right, now what does that mean? Because yeah. I failed math, so percentile so is... So anyway, so out of, out of, while comparing these, these, um, these five, so there's 100% of which, you know, if everyone... I know they're not all going to add up to 100. Right. That's not really how Google Trends works. Yes. But that's just where it stands right now as to how, um, how compared to where it has been and where it, has, it, it could potentially go, the forecast. That's where it stands right now. Well, wait, wait. Well, when you say out of 100 out is of percentile. 100. Yes. Right, got it. Okay. Out of, wait, out of 100 searches, 85% of that, them? You're taking this too <laughs> no, far. But I don't understand. What, what do you do? You're making this so much more complex than it needs to be. Just understand that bigger Eight. numbers mean better. Okay. For me to explain this, I would have to have a full all right, all right, don't worry about engineering it. degree. Peak search know. volume. There you go. Peak search volume. Thank you for using the key that Josh <laughs> put together. Great job. <laughs> anyway, so E30 is the top of the list. Middle, uh, uh, right after that, is actually the BRZ. Wow. The, or the BRZ, whatever the hell. BRZ? <laughs> well, because people love that car. More so than the FRS or the GT86. Wow. But after the BRZ is actually 370Z still. Wow. And then MX-5 and then FRS GT86. So this is... That's how, interesting. That, make, that makes no sense to me. Just it, it's really weird. Actually, you know... Um, what? Okay, so it doesn't make... It makes more sense to me because... Um, the BRZ... It's more the, pr it's the better brand image, I, th I guess you would say. Yeah, I think, I think Subaru's brand among enthusiasts... Actually, I don't know if that is Makes actually no the case. Anyway, right, whatever, so yeah. mid-range, we took the C63 AMG, the BMW M3, the Audi RS4, the Boxster, and the Lotus Elise. These are the terms we actually used. We didn't use Lotus Elise, we used Elise because it was actually better than Lotus Elise when mm -hmm. searching. Um, Audi RS4, we also used, you know, in terms of the, the, the way the, the, the term is optimized. I know RS4, there's a space there, but people don't search it like that. Um, and, of course, the M3 is killing it all at 79, uh, at the so, 79 percentile. Yeah. With the Boxster second and the C63 in third, with the least and the measly 13. So what you're saying is this is the sort of enthusiast leaderboard. Bingo. For, for the Internet. Bingo. The Based internet off leaderboard. what people are searching in this particular week, January 7th. Seven. Okay. So uh, next, please, Ian. We're now into our top range cars. Corvette. Wow. Is killing it right now. Corvette is to the killing Ferrari, it. Ferrari 458. It has per surpassed the Ferrari 458 this week. Wow. Uh, the Porsche 911, Nissan GTR, and the McLaren MP412CR at the bottom of the list. Wow. That's impressive considering that. The Nissan GTR used to be the top of everything. Yeah, it's true. Whenever we used to do um, well, videos, that would always get big search terms. Unfortunately, guess why we're doing a Corvette episode today? <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And of course, in the Uber, which of course Ian has pointed out to me, means over, not what we always consider Uber to be in the. Unless car you're an industry. Ubermensch. The super. Thank you, Mike. Superman. All right, <laughs> Bugatti Veyron is still at the top of the list with the um, McLaren F1, a 20-year-old car still. In yeah. second place at 13. We're, we're eventually going to retire the Veyron because I hate seeing that. Well, by the way, you know, it's interesting that the Veyron is still there and the GTR um, isn't as... That's, uh, that's very interesting, yeah. Oh, wait, wait a minute. But does the, does the, the, um, the, the hyphen, hyphen matter? The hyphen actually does matter. Uh -huh. We tried both and this was the best one. Wow. People are actually using the hyphen. Interesting. Interesting enough. It's a and branding of course, issue. Wait, wait, no, so why is the BMW i8 here? So that's not a car because, that's out yet. Because, actually interesting enough, and I'll get into this in a later discussion, the okay. i8 
has done uh, has compared to all new hypercars, supercars. Yeah, it's actually when he took Veyron out of this list, it's actually doing quite well. Um, and especially in North America, that is a very high search term right now. I think wow. BMW is doing a very good job at marketing that car in North America. And of course, Koenigsegg is at the bottom of the list because no one can spell Koenigsegg. Oh, right, right. That's true. So what are we going to do? Every week we're going to go back and take a look at this, and then you guys can tell us what cars we should add to this. Bingo, yes. We're going to play bingo? No, no, no. Oh, all right. I hate you. <laughs> but we can, yeah, the, we, will, we will be able to change this list as we go each week. Cool. That'd Sounds be cool. good. It's our, it's our cool little thing. And then we just need, like, the board with, and just to move to stuff that. around on the... All right, anyway, at Drive on Twitter, Facebook.com slash Drive TV. Let us know what you think about our little data project over here and um, which cars we should, we should check and put on the list yep. in all of those categories. And um, we will see you next week here on Road Testament. Adios.